Well, hello, everybody. My name is Bill Kalivas. I'm with Launchpad. I want to welcome you to Launchpad Live. Uh, this is our weekly program where we discuss local industry topics, meet special guests who are working in the industry. And as usual, we have a live studio audience, and we also have folks at home or on their computer who are maybe playing hooky or getting ready for lunch. But uh, welcome if you're watching us uh, at home over the internet. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about real estate. We're going to meet some wonderful local experts. Um, what I'd like to do now is let them introduce themselves. So, Jeff, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead. Sure. I'm Jeff Berglund, one of the VPs of <coughs> production at Washington Trust Bank for mortgage. Great. Uh, Mary Ann Gunther Bornhoft. I'm with Windermere Manitou. Anthony Carollo. I'm the president of uh, Stewart Title and Spokane. So obviously we have a, I believe we have a thriving real estate industry here. We have a, a wonderful professionals. We have some great companies. But for people who are members of Launchpad or just members of the business community, I think it's a good idea to really get a check on uh, the status of the real estate market and, and what's happening, whether you're a real estate agent or you're a job seeker, maybe looking to become uh, a professional in the real estate industry. I think these are great opportunities for people to learn from local experts, but also to connect with one another. So on this program, we'll have about a 45-minute discussion uh, with our guests and with the audience. And if you're watching us over the internet, feel free to ask questions via WebShare Live. And we'll try to respond to your questions uh, with the guests as well. Following this event or following this discussion, we'll have a, a little opportunity to have some lunch and some networking at Nectar Tasting Room. Uh, and there is wine available. Uh, we just need to check your IDs, uh, especially you in the front row up here. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I do always, I like to tell a story, uh, if you'll indulge me for just a minute, of uh, people who, who constantly are asking me, where'd you come up with the idea for Launchpad? Launchpad really is an online social network that you, where you can connect in certain industries, local industries, so you can build those uh, relationships online and, and, and uh, create credibility, blog posts. But more importantly, you, you can connect offline. We host these kind of events that are face-to-face. -face. How I came up with that idea was my stepfather was a real estate broker for 30 years in Spokane Valley and very successful. And he didn't have a Twitter account. He didn't own a fax machine. He didn't have a pager. He wasn't on Facebook. Mm -hmm. He owned no social media. But what he did religiously was build relationships with people face to face. And he built, built trust. And I tell that, uh, people that really gave me the idea for Launchpad, where I think in any industry, you need to build relationships face to face the good old fashioned way. And that really was the idea and the impetus for Launchpad. And I don't care what industry you're in. And, and my father used to spend time you know, going to dinner and playing golf with people that were in the title. Uh, insurance business, they were appraisers, they were uh, mortgage folks, uh, closing attorneys. He just built a network of relationships. I'll bet you, if you look at the top 1% of real estate agents, they're very good at building relationships with that ecosystem. I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I've, I've asked quite a few people and they just seem to do that naturally. So with that in mind, um, I just have a couple of uh, quick questions to get started and in the, in the audience, feel free to ask away and, and we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm very thankful you're all here today. I know everyone's very busy, but Marianne, your, your um, upcoming uh, in 2012, you're gonna be the president-elect, or you are the president-elect for the Spokane Association of Realtors. Yeah, Congratulations. 2012, thank you very much. Yeah, so tell us, do you have any stats on the local real estate market maybe that you wanna share with us? You know, I like to say it's hot off the presses literally, and um, I just got this, uh, this statistic uh, for November, and it's, it's actually good news. For the first time in, a, in quite a while, um, Sales for November up 16.1 percent over hmm. November last year. Great! It, it is amazing to me. I'm very excited. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Happy days. <laughs> and and really, you have to look at this though. Year to date, our sales are still down 6.5 percent. But however, the second half of this year, um, sales are up 13 percent. So we are seeing, thank goodness, an upward trend in volume, and that is a really good thing for Spokane. And that paired with our inventory is down 10.6% from last year. So that's, that's quite a bit of a change. So our inventory is down. Our prices, um, they are unfortunately uh, continuing to fall a little bit. And that is primarily because of the REO sales and the short sales, the bank repos that are out there. So those sales are down. Um, uh, in, you know, in pricing. Right. And so that continues to make up about 25% of our local sales of okay. the market. Nationwide, you're looking at about 30. So actually, this is the first time in a while 
we're bucking the trend. Our, our distressed property is about 25% right now sure. of, our, of our market. And that really correlates with the lower sales price. Now, the, the average sales price um, for November was 167200 That's down 7.3% from November last hmm. year. And the median price um, is down 2.3%. So we're still trending downward. However, I can honestly say, and thanks to your post, um, he quoted, uh, you know, it, it was a really good statistic about consumers and what they can afford, the affordability mm -hmm. quotient. <clears throat> Spokane, we have the luxury of being, um, I think we're the top for the, for the, for the state at 80%. So our affordability factor right now is just a little above 80%. So 80% of our consumers right now can buy a house. Mm -hmm. Now, in about 2007, um, that figure was uh, quite low. And, yeah. you know, I think the median price was like 240. So because of our pricing, you know, it's going down, even though, you know, our economy right now is suffering a little bit, our prices are reflecting in that. Therefore, we can actually buy um, more than most of the nation. So, great. you know, and I think, don't you think that that's a really good, I mean, that's great for Spokane. That's positive. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. That's great news. No, thank you for sharing that. So Anthony, um, Anthony's a, a founding member of Launchpad. He's, he's been with us for the year and we love your posts. Uh, he, he has a blog post that he is very consistent with. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Tell us what gave you the idea to start posting and what kind of information do you post on your blog? Um, well, first of all, to tell you how it started, um, I had a, a friend that was um, emailing news on an irregular basis, um, and he'd, he'd send his email out to about, I don't know, a couple hundred people every time uh, he sent out an email, and it was maybe once a week when he came across something that was striking. Uh, and he said he would hear back from people that would uh, respond to him that he'd never emailed. Hmm. And he'd, he'd ask them how they found out about him, and it was two or three emails back. Uh, and he said, that's, that's viral marketing. So. This is going back a couple years. Um, I realized there was an opportunity there for, you know, the, the title insurance industry as a whole can do a better job of touching the consumer mm -hmm. and communicating with the consumer. Um, and, and so that's my effort is to try and get the word out to, um, you know, Joe Blow on the street mm -hmm. um, about what I think the Joe's here, real actually. estate <laughs> market is doing. So, yeah. so that's, that's our <laughs> effort. The and, and the insurance commissioner of the state of Washington has tried to push title companies to, to advertise and, and market themselves to right. the consumer more. Right. So. But, but I like how you've um, adapted to social media. And you're really saying, you know what, blogging really is a, a strong uh, way to communicate. And nationally, Absolutely. bloggers are extremely powerful in the way that they can share information and, and provide influence, whether it's in politics or, or industry. And so I really applaud you for, for doing that and being very consistent about it. Have you seen an uptick in the way it's helped you build some brand awareness, relationships? Talk about that for just a, just a moment, if you would. Well, um, Stuart Title is fairly new to the Spokane market. Um, mm -hmm. We've been here about seven years, and every other title company in town has probably 30 years on us in terms mm -hmm. of experience in the Spokane market. So, so brand awareness for us is critical, and that's uh, right. a, a opportunity for us to get our name and face out there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, not just with realtors and lenders, but with the average consumer. So, um, so that's helped us a lot uh, because title and escrow is not something that consumers think about when they think about buying a house. It's so sexy. I know. It's the, my favorite part of the whole transaction. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all about the title insurance. As it is for everybody. <laughs> so, uh, so it's just done wonders for us in terms of getting our name. Yeah, that's out. great. And, and I, media, again, too. yeah, I applaud you. I mean, it's, uh, you know, there are some folks that really fight social media and uh, say, well, we're not gonna get into that. And, and I always tell them, I, I'm not really into social media either. We just started a site. Um, but just because you're not on social media doesn't mean people aren't talking about you online. So if nothing else, you need to at least understand what people are saying, then you have an opportunity to, to do something about it. So you really have to un take, it, you know, take, a, take a step back and really look at it. So Jeff, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about what you're seeing in your world and, and mortgage uh, lending and, and sort of what's going on right now. And, Maybe any trends that you've seen over the last year or two and where things stand today? Well, we've had the continued uh, benefit of refinance, which is it's great when you're in the mortgage industry. And I think it maybe is helping keep some inventory off the market because these people, if they become frustrated with the value they're seeing for their home, their sellers, they're opting to refinance, uh, which is a two-edged sword because on the one hand, 
they may stay in that house for four or five years instead of deciding to wait till next spring to possibly sell. So uh, we're helping people. We're reducing their payments, helping their cash flow, which uh, hopefully they're saving some more money for when they do want to make a move. Mm -hmm. uh, we're reading right now, speaking of blogs and email that's chattering around the world, that there may be a QE3 come first quarter or second quarter wherein the Fed's talking about buying a lot more mortgage-backed securities, which is underlying all of what we do, in which case, who knows what rates will be next year. Now, for people that don't know about what QE3 is, can you explain that just briefly? Uh, in lay terms, what they're doing is they're adding an additional layer. They're a buyer of our mortgage paper. Okay. And whereas it used to be out there for the private industry, the government's come in and they're shoring that up. So we have, in one sense, artificially low rates. And so we don't know how long that will continue. And we always offer that to people who are trying to decide what to do today or right. tomorrow or in the future. Uh, one thing we've talked about in the industry is it better to buy today or in the future because the value of the low rates may exceed any, any further drop in price. Hmm. Because if the rates turn around at some point, there's a big offset there. Okay. So let's say, uh, I, I like to take the angle of our members on Launchpad and people in the audience, and we really have sort of four demographics or, or four types of members. We have business professionals that are in, working for a company. We have uh, business owners. We have uh, college students and job seekers. And, you know, maybe some retirees and some other folks, but that seems to be the main sort of um, demographic of members that we have. So let's say I'm a job seeker. Would, you go, would I really uh, benefit from looking at real estate as a profession right now? I think it's a great time to, to be in, in, in any type of the industry because really now you get to learn mm -hmm. from the best because really, I mean, it's weeding out of the, you know, other type of, you know, but my business agents and, right. you know, you're, you're going into an industry now, you do have to work smarter, not right. necessarily harder. You just have to know the the tools of the trade, and and now you can take the time to really, you know, go that next level. And I honestly think, you know, when I started in real estate in '95, the market was not um, doing that well either. And mm -hmm. um, so I learned grassroots, and it, it was amazing. And I, I love this job. I mean, every day I get to make someone happy by mm -hmm. either selling a house or selling them a house. So what greater job is that? But really, I mean, if someone's looking at it, whether it's in the mortgage industry or in title or closing or you know any type of um, you know, real estate industry job right now, I think it's a very good time if you are, you know, having a goal of wanting to be successful and you want mm -hmm. to work at it. And really, that's really the goal, I think, is just, you know, the proof is in the pudding. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, you know, you know you've made it when people quote you on the street. So someone quoted something that you said yesterday mm. on one of your, your blog posts. So, I mean, I think that's a good credit, and I think that that's what you You can do. stop now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now, now he's just kind of, you know, now yeah. do something bigger. But, yeah, I mean, I think that's important. That's and you have to look at this industry as, you know, we are always going to be there. Right. So, you know, you can pick who you want to work for, and, you know, as long as you work hard, mm -hmm. you're going to make it. And, and I know from past experience, and my, again, my father being in the real estate industry, there are some phenomenal training programs in this region, and I think technology is adding to that. But I, I really, I, I, I encourage people to look at real estate as a potential uh, career, and, and I think it's really a, a great community here in this region. Um, so, Jeff, you, uh, you, how long have you been with, uh, with Washington Trust? A little over three years. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, but you've been in the mortgage industry. Uh, Since 94. Okay. So you've seen quite a bit of the ups and downs, For right? sure. So obviously uh, mortgage industry, the mortgage industry or anything that has to do with finance is such a critical part <coughs> of the whole process. So what, what do you say to folks right now that are looking to buy a house? You know, what's, I, I believe from hearing from people I know, the criteria is, is much steeper now and much, much tougher is that true, or is it, is it, has it always been tough, uh, but we just, you know, because everyone was so anxious to get people into homes, did they lower that requirement a little bit? Is it back to, where, is it back to normal, where it should be? You know, what do you think about that? From a regulatory standpoint, I think we always overreact, so the pendulum swung too far mm -hmm. right now. Uh, it takes us a lot longer to get a loan done because of the additional... Uh, regulatory stuff for anti-money laundering, you know, we have to require, we assemble a lot more documentation. So again, mm -hmm. that's a regulatory. Uh, we have issues with uh, Fannie Freddie right now that they've just put on another layer for appraisals and there are 700 fields that have to be matched. All these appraisals have to be like kind now. Mm -hmm. So we have a review process that takes longer or if we don't do it properly, they'll make us buy the loan back. Mm -hmm. So um, 
as requirements go, uh, debt ratios were compressed a little bit, but they needed to be probably. Mm -hmm. uh, some years back, Congress decided they were going to raise the percentage of home ownership, mm -hmm. and the only way to do that was to loosen credit guidelines. Right. So, you know, we, we've experienced the result of that and the attendant uh, fallout that went with it. No one is blameless, really, from that, but mm -hmm. we're in a new beginning. Uh, our ratios are still higher than they were, say, in the 80s. Gotcha. So in that regard, it's still, we can, we carry a pretty big shoehorn for people that are paying their bills and have some income. Mm -hmm. They can buy a home. Hmm. So uh, there are programs that you probably seek out for different folks in different Certainly. situations. And, and I myself was a veteran, so I've used the, the VA benefit a couple of times. And I've been very pleasantly surprised. Uh, bought a home two years ago, and people were very anxious. Um, had, had a great experience with the process. Um, yeah, I think people just need to rely on the professionals, right? We need to do, as an industry, a good job or a better job always, I think, of setting expectations. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, being in the front lines, when a, a borrower or a prospect comes in, we need to set the table for them saying, here's how this is going to play. Right, right. And when we give them those first disclosures, which are, again, our regulators try to make it simpler and they always mm -hmm. wind up seeing to add more pages. We have to go and to give them the chapter and verse and say, these are, this is what these things mean to you. So when mm -hmm. you see them in the process, it won't just be a lot of odd names and a lot of money. Right. So they could explain it to a stranger, at least while they're in the process. Right. So, Anthony, um, you've been in the industry, the title industry, for how long? 1988 when I started. Wow. I was just a kid. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'm sure I'm older than you are. Yeah, exactly. You still are. <laughs> Nobody bought that. Um, <laughs> Curious, uh, you've been in this industry for quite a while. Um, you've seen the ebbs and flows, yeah. the ups and downs. So tell us what's going on in the title in, uh, industry right now. What, what are some of the changes you've seen as a result of the last few years? Well, certainly um, from a title insurance perspective, um, you know, we're underwriting construction loans a lot tighter than we used to. Um, we're looking at the builder more closely. Um, the title insurance industry has taken a tremendous amount of losses on construction lending and development loans and that kind of thing. Um, that, that doesn't mean it's difficult or impossible to get a construction loan. I'm just saying uh, from a title insurance perspective, we've written a lot of checks on developments that didn't make it. Hmm. Um, and, uh, and you're also seeing some consolidation of title companies. Uh, we've gone in Spokane alone from five title companies to four recently. Um, and, and certainly you're seeing that nationwide. Mm -hmm. uh, some consolidation, like you are in banking. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, do any of you have job openings at your companies? And I know with real estate, it's a little bit different. You, you're independent, right? You have uh, yeah, contractors. Yeah, I work Windermere, and um, so we're all independent contractors. Windermere is always hiring, so mm -hmm. you can see me after if you want to work for my company. It's an awesome company to be. I've been there over 10 years, and I actually started my career at John L. Scott, and I've only worked two, for two companies in town, and both of them are awesome. And mm -hmm. every company, I'm sure, in town will say they're hiring, and I definitely think you should check it out. But really, the gatekeeper for real estate in Spokane is the Spokane Association of Realtors. Mm -hmm. And we are one of 1,300 associations in the nation. The realtor designation and being a realtor is a little different than being a real estate agent. When you're a real estate agent, you can practice real estate in the state that you live, but you may not be a realtor. And there's a big distinction. Mm -hmm. In Spokane, in 19, I believe, 76, um, they got very wise and decided that the real estate realtor association should own the MLS, the multiple listing service. So we actually own our MLS. And we're, we're one of um, a handful in Washington state that actually do own their own MLSs. Um, in Seattle, the Northwest MLS is not owned by the uh, local associations. It's an independent entity. Whereas here, when you want to go buy a house and you use a realtor, you get the benefit of using that agent who has subscribed by the, the and is really, um, you know, honored to to use the code of ethics in their business practices. So we're we're a step above a real estate agent. Okay. And the Spokane Association, we have about fourteen hundred members right now. Okay. And I say we're tiny and mighty. Um, originally, you know, um, back in the day, for quite a while we had just under a thousand, and then we went up to our heyday, almost twenty five hundred. Now we're down to about 1,400. Yeah. And we've had longevity in the, you know, in the community. And um, this is our 100 year. So we are celebrating mm. our 100 year this year. Mm. And so I'm really proud to be part of an association that has such good longevity. What's interesting about our group is this year, um, I was elected president-elect for 2012. I'll be president um, for uh, the Spokane Association in 2013. Mm -hmm. And Marilyn Amato will be our president for this next year. I'm really excited. Um, she's 
uh, going to be replacing Joe Mann, who is our current president, wonderful guy. And mm -hmm. so in, um, with her blessing, she has allowed me to pursue a new program through the Spokane Association. It's called the Young Professionals Network. Hmm. And this is actually um, going to be something I'm really um, going to be focusing a lot of energy on. Nationwide, um, what we're seeing is af average realtor is 55 and older. Hmm. And younger um, job seekers maybe not thinking that is a career option anymore like they used to. And so what we want to do is engage that younger member, 40 and under. Now, anyone who is of any age and wants to have a young at heart real estate career can join our group. Um, we're going to be charted hopefully next week. Why would you look at me when you <laughs> said younger at heart? I'm, um, I love baby boomers. I, it's great. Mm -hmm. and, and I honestly say that, you know, we have to look to the to our younger generation. Right. The millennials are coming up, Gen Xers right yep. now and the Ys, and, and have them help us into the next future of the leadership. Right. So um, we're going to be chaptering uh, very soon, the first of the year. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look um, not only to everyone in the memberships, not only to realtors, but it's to industry associates. So Good. someone from title companies can be on and a lender can be in this group. And really our focus is networking. Mm -hmm. and technology That's and I, I'm glad to see Jeanette Karras is in our and she's a past president of the association and she actually is spearheading a new technology think tank at the association Great. so we're going to be able to join in some of those wonderful events that they're going to be putting on mm -hmm. and so we're we're finally um, coming out of the dark ages and, and embracing technology and we have a wonderful staff at the association Mike Benson and, and mm -hmm. really going to help us take the next level and really go and run with the ball so to speak and, and really help the association help our consumer because if we can mm -hmm. have tools and tips of the trade mm -hmm. um, for technology so now where a consumer can go find a house easier and work with a professional that makes the transaction seamless I mean that's all what we want right, that's really. great I mean yeah no that's awesome I, I applaud you for that we love those partnering with those kind of yeah. organizations so keep Launchpad in mind as we build the real estate community oh, a, a to partner yes. and we also have a young uh, professionals community called next generation leaders and what a lot of people don't realize is, and, and, and most probably um, do, but it's a reality that millennials and Gen Xers are going to be the dominant generation of the workforce in the next 10 years, with uh, many uh, people looking to retire, uh, depending on the economy, of course. Um, but as they move out, then the next pr uh, generation will be moving in. So I love the idea of training. Yeah. I love the idea of mentoring. And I, and I just think that's so brilliant. And uh, anything we can do to partner and, oh, and help is great. Um, so for, for you two gentlemen, uh, I believe in building relationships is how we grow our business, how we grow as individuals, how we, you know, genuine uh, relationships, but we also need to be somewhat strategic about it. And, and like I said at the beginning, we need to build relationships with people in our own industry so we can really become experts and, and, and understand and have the longevity like the three of you have. Um, what, what kind of tips and information or, or, you know, anything that you could share with folks who are struggling maybe a little bit to, to keep busy. And for, uh, from a referral standpoint, what's worked for you in building relationships and, and that kind of business? Um, well, for me, um, you know, every transaction needs title insurance. So, uh, or escrow and or mm -hmm. escrow. So for us to build relationships with um, any and every consumer, I mean, that's maybe over the age of 18, um, is is a benefit and of help, mm -hmm. but um, but in particular, if, if I'm building relationships within the real estate industry using Launchpad or LinkedIn or um, uh, any of those social networks is helpful. Mm -hmm. But the face to face is absolutely right. critical. Right. Uh, events like this right. um, are really helpful for us to right. to get a an <coughs> and face up. Yeah, and I didn't pay him to say any of that. By no. the way, it was outstanding. So Jeff. Well, I've had the good fortune to go to work for a bank that's fourth generation family owned. We're 110 years old and it's been built on relationships. So uh, much of that in the past, of course, is eyeball to eyeball. I don't think there's any substitute for that right. as far as uh, a lasting impression. But in today's world of media, things like this are invaluable. <coughs> and you know, being involved and going to your earlier question, um, again, some back to basics things is saying thank you for business. You know, it's just people like to hear that. They like to be acknowledged for for their trade. Yeah, absolutely. The, and and you, if you heard what he said, there's no substitute for the face-to-face. -face. I know we live in a, a technology age. We, we have to be in our cars. We have to be traveling, especially in real estate. I think real estate professionals in general, because it's such a consumer-driven 
business that you need to be available and accessible for your clients. And, and I remember growing up with, with my father, he would go show houses at 10 o'clock at night and on the weekends. And it's just a 24 seven, you're always on. And I imagine, you know, I, I, I know you most likely you have regular hours, but there's a call of duty, right? There's that, I need help, uh, I've got a question. And this has become a pretty powerful tool. So what kind of tools are out there for people in the real estate industry? You talked about technology. Uh, I follow Zillow. In fact, it used to be one of my accounts when I was working in technology. So I got to see the inner workings of Zillow, but what other tools besides Zillow are, are out there for folks? Well, I think anyone who's smart, you know, um, and, and I have to piggyback on what he said. Um, you know, we, him and I met years ago, and he put me on an email list so I get his interest rate update emails. I don't know if you remember that, but it's awesome. Yeah. I love the fact that these guys engage me, and, and that's really what it is, is they, they keep me informed so I can be a better agent. So I just thank you, both of you, because I read their, what they send out every day. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's the information that I need <coughs> um, to go out and send it to my consumers. So for me, I mean, obviously, um, the smartphone. My husband mm -hmm. called me today and said, I just bought the new iPhone. He's all excited. Mm -hmm. His contract was renewed <laughs> up today. So that was the first call he, I got. So he's right. been all excited. And I think whatever technology you embrace, do it well. Right. So whether it's you know your Droid or iPhone, you need to be mobile. Um, we have an iPad, and I, and I love that. I mean, it's just it, right. you got to go to where the consumers are, and the consumers are really embracing that. Right. And I mean, when I started, I knew where every single payphone was in town because mm -hmm. you'd, you'd have a pager, and they'd call you. You and you'd go to the and a pile of quarters in your car. Yeah. You didn't roll yeah. quarters. I'd stop at my bank yeah. every Friday and get a new roll of quarters. Right. Right. But you know now it's so easy and accessible, and you have to touch people not only in you know texting or phone, and you always ask them how do you prefer mm -hmm. to be communicated with. Some <clears> people <throat> only want texting, so that's all they do, and some people only want an email or. There are the few that only want you to see them in person. Oh right. my goodness! But a lot of people are are pretty tech savvy, and you know any kind of media mm -hmm. that you're going to want to embrace, you just want to know it. Yeah. So whatever you're doing, that's my you know, my best advice for the day is you know embrace what you have and okay. use it to the best of your ability. So don't be afraid of it. Use it for for to enhance and help you communicate. And then I fear a lot of people are saying, well, I don't need to actually get in my car and go to meet with them. Oh. Let me send them an email. And, or let me just send them a text. Well, I mean, or, you know, it's a funny thing. This last week, were, I'm not going to name the TV show, but and they didn't actually name the company, but there was a, a TV show doing a parody on how this girl didn't want to talk to this person. Mm -hmm. So he's like, well, just shy dial them. Well, it's really called sly dial, and if you don't know this, you need to get into mm -hmm. the, you know, the new thing is what people are doing now is they're sly dialing you. So sometimes you're like, uh, it went to a voicemail, like I, I didn't yeah, hear it ring. Yeah, and it yeah. happens to me sometimes and um, happens to everyone and sometimes you're in a non-cell phone range right, area. But right. sometimes they've slide dialed you. Yeah. You can actually go there and you can listen to their free ad and then you can go right to their hmm. um, mobile. It does not work on prepaid mobiles, I found that out, and it does mm -hmm. not work on home phones. But for a regular mobile, mm -hmm. if someone doesn't want to talk to you or you don't want to talk to them, you can slide dial them and that unfortunately is a caveat for our issues because right, that right. i mean people sometimes don't want to talk to you or you don't want to talk to them and yeah. they are using that as an excuse and i don't think technology should be used as an excuse right, right. but it is very easy sometimes to email someone rather than pick up the phone it is. or see them in person what do you guys think I think we're, we're depending a little too much on this at no times? it's it's an enabler i have customers in different time zones when mm -hmm. they're they say we have uh, people that are being recruited moving to spokane mm -hmm. You know, I get my rates about 6.30 in the morning, and when mm -hmm. they're getting very, they're excited and they want to lock, I text them the rates at 6.30. And so okay. they can be thinking about, by the time I get to the office, they've already just made their decision. So it's a, like good, the information. it's a good tool for communicating with your clients. At their request. What about in the beginning? Let's say you, were brand, you just hire a, a, an employee. You have an employee. You mm -hmm. just hired them. They're brand new to the mortgage industry. What kind of advice would you give them about using this to maybe make connections with people in the real estate industry to create relationships? I think it depends on the individual's character or okay. personality. In my case, there's no substitute for having an opportunity to either speak with or meet with the people mm -hmm. at least once okay. because you've set a baseline there. Okay. And after that, it's whatever, what does that customer want? A lot of these people are busy. They don't want to come downtown. They don't mm -hmm. want to sit down and meet with us. They'd like to do it from their living room. I did mm -hmm. business for years when I owned a mortgage company. Before I was at the bank, I still have people I do business with on the coast. Mm -hmm. I've never met. They're on their sixth loan. Hmm. We know each other by voice, but we've never met. And as long as the service has been good and the promise delivered, they're quite happy. I have quite a few clients that would prefer not to ever see me. <laughs> but that's just, just, I have a voice for radio <laughs> and a face. So anything, anything you'd like to add to that? Um, as far I would as just say, like the technology said, side? This, uh, the technology enhances uh, what we do. 
Yeah. Um, so, so a lot of times I'll get a, a request for a rate quote and I can go right to the Stuart's Bookam site and create the rate and email it to him. Mm. And a lot of customers would prefer that rather than me sit there and go through the quote with him over the phone. Right. They want me to just send it to him an email and they can read it when they feel like reading it. We're involved in the largest transaction most people ever make, mm -hmm. either for value or for the largest loan they're ever going to make the largest insurance policy technically they're ever getting, right. mm -hmm. uh, maybe that right up there with life insurance, they need to have a, 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 an establishment of trust. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I like that, uh, you know, whenever we can get that contact at least once, it's great. But sometimes it's not that luxury isn't there, so you have to prove yourself as you go. Right. And then... Uh, that's I'll, by doing what you say you'll do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, the three of you rely on, on, on relationships and referrals, I would imagine. Absolutely. Lifeblood. Yeah. It's the lifeblood. Mm -hmm. Same? Completely, yes. Mm -hmm. Referrals, referrals, relationships. Repeat business, referrals. Absolutely. Referrals, relationships. And that always, that's the number one question I get from every person who's just starting out in a, in a new job. How do I start? What do you tell people? Uh, how do they get started? What's the best place to start? Start as in, you know. Building I mean, relationships. Okay, well, if you're going to build a relationship, um, at least for the industry standpoint, um, I honestly think you have to lay the groundwork. So if you're a new realtor, even though you've never sold a house before, the first thing you got to do is create a website because mm -hmm. you have to have credibility. Eight, over 80% of home buyers have looked at or started their home process, you know, buying process mm -hmm. online, over 80%. And what's interesting is over 40%, I think it's almost 50%, they've actually seen the house that they're going to buy online first. So if you do not have a website, and your, your company that you're going to work for, they'll let you put other agents' websites if you get permission on yours. So it looks like you actually have listings. And I mean, everyone's got to start somewhere. You've got to have that first sale. So you build credibility with a website, and you build content. You know, go and quote Anthony, or go quote, mm -hmm. you know, um, Washington Trust, you know, Jeff's uh, interest rate for the day. You know, pull this good, credible information onto your blog and onto mm -hmm. your website so you have credibility. And then go out there. Everyone, they say, in the real estate business has six friends that they can sell a house to, whether it's friends or family, whatever. You know, mm -hmm. there's six deals throughout your life that you mm -hmm. can probably do. Um, so you've got your first six already. You mm -hmm. just have to go get it. And then it's just about going and networking, mm -hmm. going to events that you have here at Launchpad or going to... A, um, you know, a Greater Spokane Incorporated event or right. a you know, Convention and Visitors Bureau event or whatever your sphere is, whatever right. you like to do, right. go out and meet people and hand them your card and say, I'm a realtor. So that's a really key point, and it's one that we try to cover in each of these community discussions. And one of the things we're going to be doing more in 2012 is posting local networking opportunities in each community based on that industry. So, for example, we're looking for some data now on... If I'm a new realtor or I'm looking to get into the real estate industry, are there other networking groups in real estate that I could join? And, and if so, uh, can you can you name some of them? Do you know of any? Oh yes, I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. Ahead. There's um, there's Spokane Mortgage Lenders. There's uh, National Association of Professional Mortgage Women. There's um, Gosh, there's all kinds of Women's Council of Realtors just starting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then with the YPN that will be starting very soon, right. so okay. that'll be a place. Plus, there's okay. also, um, most realtors have quite a few designations behind their realtor name. Right. So mm -hmm. you go out and you get certified in a specific um, venue, so to speak. Like SRES is the seniors real estate you know, uh, specialty. So mm. if you want to specialize with seniors, and believe me, what is it, 70 million people are baby boomers? So really, that's yeah. a great niche to have. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, I am have a SRES designation. I have an EPRO um, certification. There's an EPRO group. It's mm. an internet, uh, online internet realtor group. Uh, I'm a green realtor, so I took and I'm certified to be a green realtor. And mm. I'm actually I'm on the board for the Spokane Home Builders for the Green Built Board. Right. Right. Green. right. And so you know, whatever your niche is, you can find a, you know, a networking group. You can find okay. a, a designation group that you really like. There's so many out there and so many you know, educational classes. And honestly, I love lenders and title companies. Thank you so much. They give us continuing education clock mm -hmm. hours mm -hmm. all the time. Right. Every, every week there are new classes popping up that we can take right. to further our education and also be in these networking groups. So what, what we'll do, sorry, I'll let you go real quick. What we'll do is we'll collect a lot of that data. So thank you guys for sharing. Go ahead. Just add on to what you're saying, get accredited to teach. Mm -hmm. Because now you're up in front of your prospective relationships or customers. Mm. So you're, you're establishing trust again there, and you're, you're adding depth to your own career. Well, that's wonderful. I, every time I would bring the real estate community together and we'd have discussions, the first question was always, do I get clock hours for that? And I was like, could we just have a networking event? Well, I see these people all the time. Why, 
I, unless you give me clock hours, you know, that really is a, right. that's a strong motivator in, in the industry. They have to renew every two years, and the, and the licensing, you know, requirements change a few years back. And so mm -hmm. now, um, you know, eventually everyone will have fingerprinted their um, agents. They're going through this process right now. It's very lengthy. Mm -hmm. But they've changed and, and made the requirements a little stricter, which I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. and, it, and you do have to have that continuing education as a new agent. You have to have more hours than you used to. Right. And then... Currently, you still have to have, um, you know, every two years, you have to have your renewal. And so, I mean, I, most agents, I find, though, and, and my, myself included, that I go to renew, and I'm like, well, which ones do I want to include? I'll just carry over the last, you know, 50 that I had from last time because I, right. I always have more, you know, than I need because really, mm -hmm. I mean, that's how you, the only way you can be educated and, and I think really a proponent for future sales for your own life or for mm -hmm. your own business as a realtor is to take more continuing education right, and so be in those groups. Invest in your own oh, career. Oh, you have to invest yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. We, we strongly encourage that. So uh, we're kind of winding down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is there any questions from the audience maybe? Or we don't have too many online. Uh, there, were, there was one person asking if there's a, a Launchpad group like this in Coeur d'Alene. <clears throat> and we do have a North Idaho uh, community on Launchpad, so you feel free to join. We are going to be doing more of these type of events in Coeur d'Alene or in North Idaho as well. Um, I'm personally, um, it's mysterious, but we're going to be planning those around August and July um, for some odd reason. It just kind of seems to make sense. Um, all the people from Spokane who go to North Idaho in the summer, uh, I think we'll capture them. Like um, the lakes there. That, you know. couple, of, couple of ponds. Um, so um, this has been really helpful. I, I, um, I, like I said, I, I'm fascinated with the real estate industry just having grown up and watch my, my father and just the various people I've met, some wonderful people. It's just an interesting community, and it's so vital to our economy. And, and, and I'd like to talk for a second about just, and I won't get into the whole politics side of it, I feel like people don't realize how vital the housing business has been to our economy. And when I say people, I mean maybe people that are, have influence in the media and in the government. And maybe, I don't know, it, it just seems like such a, a core uh, component to our overall economy and home ownership and the value that that has as, to the family and just to the, all the, um, the industries that the home touches. And so I, I just wanted to throw that out to see if you had any comments. That's just, I, I, feel, I feel like it's really been neglected since uh, 2008. Anyone want to touch that? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's actually a dollar figure, and I don't know it offhand, but that, you know, that, that says what, for every home sold, this much is put back in the community, and right. I can get you to that, and you can put it on your That'd be great. blog. But, um, you know, really, I think that it's a huge impact. I mean, every time a house sells, you have to have title insurance. You have to buy, you know, uh, usually get a loan. Um, you're out there, you're, you're fixing the house up, you're hiring contractors, right. you know, you're, you're getting new carpet, you're going down and buying new furniture. I mean, it affects so many industries in our community. Yeah. And, and really, we are, I mean, we are very blessed here in Spokane. We are like... This little island. I mean, the, the mm -hmm. model for Spokane years ago used to be all roads lead to Spokane. And I believe that. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I'm seeing people are still, you know, enthusiastic about buying houses right now. And with these rates now, how long? I think they're going to stay continually stay low for a while, don't you think? I think so. Yeah, certainly. Uh, there's no reason for them to go up in the near future that we can see. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the good news is, is that even now, if someone wanted to, you know, start planning, even in the spring, because... We are lucky in the spring when the minute the tulips come out of the yeah, ground, yeah. we actually see an increase in and a little bit in um, prices or sometimes hmm. stabilizing of prices. Inventory does go up, so there's more options for people. Sure. So sure. start now. Work with your call your lender or you know call someone who, who really has the know. Get pre qualified now for your future purchase. And I always say, I mean, I said December first. I am starting my. I'm starting 2012 and working, you know, December 1st because really we're 30 to 45 days out on any closing. So my year started, you know, yesterday. And we need to help with any credit scoring issues they have now so when they want to buy the house, we can take care of them. And how long does it normally take for someone to, to help improve their credit score? Well, if, if we can prove that there's something erroneous on there with a document, five business days. Okay. But otherwise, if we have to run the, you know, it has to run its course for maybe they have to heal. It, could, it just it varies with each event. Okay. But I teach credit scoring and I was... That's something we work with with every customer. We take a look at their scope, their whole report and see if there's some room for improvement. So you could go and look at someone's credit score and tell them how to fix it? Yes. Oh, that's great. Or tell them why well, they have what they have and how to get where they want to go. What's the worst Sometimes thing? Sometimes pay your yeah. bills. Yeah. But yeah. other times it may be something as simple as that. <laughs> so, you know, that's a good one. Does that take credit hours to learn how to do that? We learned that one real early. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, there are other nuances in there that uh, utilization of available credit, things like that, we hmm. can have them. 
understand that better and, and uh, the, you know, the talking heads were all after that for a while. And there was a lot of misinformation flying around, so sure. we'd like to try and help them out with that. Now, are there, is there enough education for home buyers to really understand this whole process and, and, and would it make it your jobs easier? If, if they'll go to it. Um, we certainly, we offer, we offer the courses and mm -hmm. so sometimes they're lightly attended. Sometimes we have strong attendance in it, and there's no rhyme or reason as to so why. So without credit hours, they probably won't go, right? <laughs> no, this is from all of our I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, well, <laughs> but for instance, there's a Washington State bond program that we went, and we became accredited to teach that right. so that we could offer their course. And they're fun to teach. And every yeah. time, every time I get asked something, I don't know. Hmm. And I'm not ashamed to say it you know, in front of the people. I don't know, but I'll get back to you with it. But it keeps you sharp. Sure. Well, what is the bond program? Can you explain that to people uh, who don't know? Briefly, there's a program through the state that's, uh, by the way, it does not require state money to do this. It's mm -hmm. self-funding through mm -hmm. a, a bond program through the IRS. And they offer uh, excellent opportunities for first-time home buyers and even down payment assistance. Wow, that's In great. short, in lay terms. But it's, it's a great product. That's, that's wonderful. Well, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up unless there are any questions from the audience or we do have a question. Go ahead and come on up here. This? No, you're good. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Chris McIntosh, and uh, uh, speaking of networking, i got to say I've done a horrible job. I founded Next Gen REI Club. We've been around for seven years. It's a club for real estate investors, and uh, um, so as part of that, uh, part of real estate investors, I'm also a realtor um, as well. So my question to you guys for, um, uh, for the market, the Spokane market, is I heard a recent statistic, a national statistic, uh, there's about 118 million um, homeowners in the United States, and roughly 50% uh, of those can't get financing because of credit issues. And then another probably 25% can't get financing because they're self-employed or, or they can't prove their income in one way or another. Do you know what the uh, statistic is here in the Spokane market? So it's basically, as a realtor, if, I'm out, if I have a house on the market, I'm marketing basically to only 25% of people that can get financing for a house uh, on, on the nationwide statistics. So I don't know what the statistic is here in Spokane. Is, so that's my first question. I want to follow that up with a uh, kind of an example. I, I, have a, I wasn't involved in the situation, but I know of, of an individual who had a house for sale, had three offers on the house, full price offers. All three offers fell through because of financing issue and uh, ended up... Uh, going into foreclosure because of that situation. And uh, so on the, you know, my investor hat, but my investor hat as an investor, I think there's ways that we investors have come in and tried to help solve that issue. But um, as a next gen REI club, we're trying to bring in investors and realtors and help, help them work together to help solve that problem. But, so I guess the question is, first is what is, do you know what the statistic is here? And then the second one is, how do we help solve that problem to the 75 percent of people that can't get financing. I'd like to address, Chris, your first question on that statistic, and I'd have to say it can't be. Um, it just can't be. We're, we deal with people every day, and certainly there are people that we cannot offer financing to for a variety of reasons, but by and large, uh, I'd have to say that we have quite a high re approval rate, even in today's regulatory environment. Uh, as we discussed earlier, yes, the guidelines are a little stricter, but we still are getting it done. It just takes more effort. And uh, as to the other person's, you know, that three failed and I purchases. Can I verify that statistic? So that's just what I, you know. Sure. Yeah, well, that's, that's true, you know, right? And that's fine. It, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. And then as to, you know, three failed sales, there's no way I can address that without knowing what those loan files look like. But, you know, we are in the business of making loans, not declining them. And we try very, very hard to do it. And it's just not a good, you know, it's, it's, it's like losing a patient. You feel bad when you can't make that loan for someone. It's just not a place we like to go. I don't know if you want to add into that. Well, I, I, that goes back with affordability factor. Um, you know, the statistic just came out that you know about eighty percent of our consumers can buy a house now. So, you know, I think that we are um, we're our own little island, so to speak, in in our reality for real estate in Spokane. And I have to say, I have had more stories of like just like the that client that you know in our office and and in in Spokane in general. It just takes, and you probably see this too. It just takes one mistake. You know, invariably, I, I have clients who are like, I'm going to go buy a new car or I'm going to buy a new couch for my house. I'm like, no, this is the last thing you want to do is change your credit. You don't want to do any kind of, uh, you know, don't do any purchases, major purchases on your, you know, credit cards. Just, just kind of wait. you got to wait. I mean, and that is the most important. 
important thing that they need to remember is little things that you could do really affect you. And, um, and to the point where I had a client that bought a car six months ago and two different, it went to two different lenders to, and it showed up twice and, and they were kind of questioning it. She's like, well, I've been making the payments for six months and I have all this money in the bank, I'm fine. But it did come up as a inquiry, inquiry on her credit. And you, know, you just have to be very careful. If you're thinking of buying something now, you know, really get with a lender right, right away. And just wait. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, Chris. We appreciate the question. We got to wrap up here. We got about one minute left. One uh, did point. you want to make a point? I Go do. Ahead. Just this, it's great on this credit inquiry thing. Just real quick, you can make a thousand inquiries in a two-week period for a home loan. It counts as one. It's per the Federal Fair, the Fair Credit Reporting Act. So same way for automobiles, I think they've got a two-week window. Sometimes up to 45 days, depending on the engine being used. But so you can shop. That was designed so you can go out and shop. Okay. Any final thoughts from our panelists? Real estate industry is on the uptick awesome. here locally. That's awesome. Uh, yes. Title insurance industry still going strong. We obviously that's need it. it. It's a good career move if folks are looking to look at the real estate industry overall. I think yep. that's, that's good advice. Uh, the mortgage industry, a little yeah. tighter looking at financing, but probably We're where growing. it should have been. The company's yeah. growing. We're gaining market share. We want your business. Okay. Nice pitch. You'll be in to see us today, right? Always be closing. I like that. Uh, I have to give props to my good friend Mike Hogan of uh, uh, Chimney Rock. He, I, I, I'm pretty faithful. He's, I've stuck with him forever. He's, he's always done me right. So, um, Listen, I want to tell everybody thank you, and I appreciate you being here. We'll have networking uh, right after we're done. And those folks online, you can watch this uh, online on WebShare Live. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs>